Howdy, Mike. Nick, how's everything going tonight? Hold on a second. I can't hear you. Let me test my speakers here. Here. You're not working at all. It's not. Okay, we're good. You're working? We're not. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I believe we're on text 47. Is it 47 or 40? 43, maybe? It was either 46 or 47. I thought it was 46. 47. We ended up on 46, the end of 46. So we're on 47. Okay. Let me share the screen here. David Ananda Pandit was asking some good questions. Yeah. He's very expert at doing that. Let me see here. But did he head back down to New Vrindavan? Yeah, he's he's there most of the time. He lives in a little cabin that he built by himself. His wife lives in an apartment, but he can't afford it. It's like 700 bucks a month, and he wants to build a, a um, cob house, kind of like Adobe okay. for his wife. And, uh, you know, he's like a really totally, totally old school type of guy. I mean, this cabin he built, he did it with like local wood. He didn't use any, any kind of tools. He, you know, it's a log cabin with the, with the pins and everything from, and he put the logs together with a, a, a hand auger to put the pins into it. So it would fit together and he used like old sweaters and stuff for, for insulation. I mean, he's like medieval old school. Okay. <laughs> Nobody can relate to it, but he's he has he's building a cob oven to make uh, maple syrup, a, sur a sugar shack. He taps the maple trees, you know, in February, March, and uh, makes maple syrup. And uh, he's a really good cook. And then he's he's building it. Um, a sugar shack, like I said, but, uh, and then he's building a house, but uh, he's got his own land. So he's going to do that. And so he can s save some money because he makes actually almost nothing from, he, he drives around this big old clunker, which is like a gas guzzling monster. And he, he gets like 12 miles a gallon or 10 miles a gallon. And uh, he goes all over the place though, to these various uh, retirement homes and entertains the old people. Uh, so, uh, you want to start out here? Sure. Okay. Text 47. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Maya Prasanena Tvar Arjunedam Rupam Param Darshitam Atma Yogat Ejo Mayam Vishvam Anantam Adiyam Nyan Metvad Anyena Na Darshita Purvam. Synonyms. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, the Supreme Personality of God, had said, Maya, by me, Prasanena, happily, Tava, unto you, Arjuna, O Arjuna, Idam, this, Rupam, form, Param, transcendental, Darshitam, shown, Atmayogat, by my internal potency, Tejab Mayam, full of effulgence, Vishvam, the entire universe, Anantam, unlimited, Adyam, original, Yat, that which, uh, May, my, uh, Tvat Ananya, uh, besides you, na dursta purvam, no one has previously seen. Translation. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, happily have I shown you by my eternal potency, this supreme universal form within the material world. No one before you has seen this primal form, unlimited, 
and full of glaring effulgence. Purport. Arjuna wanted to see the universal form of the Supreme Lord, so Lord Krishna, out of his mercy upon his devotee Arjuna, showed his universal form full of effulgence and opulence. His form was glaring like the sun, and its many faces were rapidly changing. Krishna showed this form just to satisfy the desire of his friend Arjuna. This form was manifested by Krishna through his internal potency, which is inconceivable by human speculation. No one had seen this universal form before, or this universal form of the Lord before Arjuna. But because this form was shown to Arjuna, other devotees in the heavenly planets and other planets in outer space could also see it. They had not seen it before, but because Arjuna, they, because of Arjuna, they were able to see it. In other words, all the disciplic devotees of the Lord could see the universal form which was shown to Arjuna by the mercy of Krishna. Someone has commentated that this form was shown to Duryodhana also when Krishna went to Duryodhana to negotiate for peace. Unfortunately, Duryodhana did not accept the peace offer, but at that time Krishna manifested some of his universal forms. But those forms are different from the one shown to Arjuna. It is clearly said that no one had ever seen this form before. So when um, Mother Yashoda looked into Krishna's mouth. She was really seeing all of creation, but not necessarily the same equivalent of the universal form then, correct? No, he was, she wasn't seeing the universal form that was manifested to Arjuna. Arjuna, Arjuna was seeing the, you know, the feature of, of uh, you know, the horrific blazing fire with teeth that were, you know, crunching all the heads of the, the opposing army and stuff like that. She, Krishna didn't show Mother Yasoda that, but she did see like all the modes of material nature and all the saints and the rishis and the heavenly planets. And she saw herself and her baby on her lap, uh, you know, so it was like, and then, uh, you know, and then she just, you know, kind of brushed it off. She didn't think that much about it because she was more interested in taking care of her kid. Mm -hmm. Because that's the nature of Vatsalya Ras. No one loved Krishna more than Mother Yashoda. He's, she is the epitome, uh, the quintessential example of, of uh, parental affection. Text 48. Naveda yajna deniyar na danar na cha kriya bir na tapo bir ugrai evam rupa shakya hamri loke drastum tvadanyena kuru parvira Na, never, Veda Yaga by sacrifice, Anya Yanai, or Vedic study, Na, never, Deny by charity, Na, never, Cha, also, Kriya B by pious activities, Na, never, Tapo B by serious penances, Ugrai, severe, Evam Rupa, in this form, Shakya, can Aham I, Nri Loke, in this material world, Drastum be seen. But then you, Anyena, by another Kuru Pravira, O best of the Kuru, among the Kuru warriors. Translation, O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mind, for neither by studying Vedas, nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances can I be seen in this form in the material world. I mean, that's you know, if Mother Yasoda would have seen that form, he would have said that he showed it to Mother Yasoda, but he didn't say that. Purport. The divine vision in this connection should be clearly understood. Who can have that divine vision? Divine means godly. Unless one has attained a status of divinity as a demigod, he cannot have divine vision. And what is a demigod? It is stated in the Vedic scriptures that those who are devotees of Lord Vishnu are demigods. Vishnu Bhakti Shmritodava, those who are atheistic, i.e. who do not believe in Vishnu, or who recognize only the impersonal part of Krishna as the Supreme, cannot have the divine vision. It is not possible to decry Krishna and at the same time have the divine vision. One cannot have the divine vision without becoming divine. In other words, those who have divine vision can also see like Arjuna. In other words, you have to become pure devotee in order to understand who a pure devotee is you can read uh, the next paragraph we'll take turns bhagavad gita gives the description of the universal form although this description was unknown to everyone before arjuna now one can have some idea of the vishvarupa after this incident those who are actually divine can see the universal form of the lord but one cannot be divine without being a pure devotee of krishna 
The devotees, however, who are actually in the divine nature and who have divine vision, are not very much interested in seeing the universal form of the Lord. As described in the previous verse, Arjuna decided to see the four-handed form of Lord Krishna as Vishnu, and he was actually afraid of the universal form. In this verse, there are some significant words like, just like Veda, Yajna, Dhyana, Nai, Daya, Nai, which refers to studying Vedic literature and the subject of sacrificial regulations. Veda refers to all kinds of Vedic literature, such as the four Vedas, Rig, Yagar, Sama, and Atarva, and the 18 Puranas, the Upanishads, and the Vedanta Sutra. One can study these at home or anywhere else. Similarly, there are sutras, Kalpa sutras, Ramamsa sutras, for studying the method of sacrifice. Deny refers to charity, which is offered to a suitable party, such as those who are engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, the Brahmanas and the Vaishnavas. Similarly, quote, pious activities, end quote, refers to the Agnihotra and the prescribed duties of the different castes. And the voluntary acceptance of some bodily pains is called tapasya. So one can perform all these, can accept bodily penances, give charity, study the Vedas, etc. But unless he is a devotee like Arjuna, it is not possible to see that universal form. Those who are impersonalists are also imagining that they are seeing the universal form of the Lord. But from Bhagavad Gita, we understand that the impersonalists are not devotees. Therefore, they are unable to see the universal form of the Lord. There are many persons who create incarnations. They falsely claim an ordinary human to be an incarnation, but this is all foolishness. We should follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, there is no possibility of attaining perfect spiritual knowledge. Although Bhagavad Gita is considered the preliminary study of the science of God, still, it is so perfect that it enables one to distinguish what is what. The followers of a pseudo-incarnation may say that they have also seen the transcendental incarnation of God, the universal form, but this is unacceptable because it is clearly stated here that unless one becomes a devotee of Krishna, one cannot see the universal form of God. So one, first of all, has to become a pure devotee of Krishna. Then he can claim that he can show the universal form of what he has seen. A devotee of Krishna cannot accept false incarnations or followers of false incarnations. Yeah, Prabhupada says, if you think you're God, if you say you're God, you're immediately dog. <laughs> D-O-G, D-O-G-O-D. Text 49. Mate vyata macha vimuhuda bavo drishrarupam goram adin mamedam. Vyapeta bi pritamana punastvam tad eva me rupamidam prapasya. Ma, let it not be, te unto you, viata trouble, ma, let it not be, cha also, bimudabhava, bewilderment, drisva by seeing rupam form, goram, horrible, idik as it is, mama my, idam this, vyapeta be free from all fear, prita, prita mana, pleased in mind, puna again, tvam you, tat that, eva thus, may my, rupam form, idam this, prapas, prapasya, just see, Translation, you have been perturbed and bewildered by seeing this horrible feature of mine. Let it, now let it be finished. My devotee be free again from all disturbances with a peaceful mind. You can now see the form you desire. Report. In the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was worried about killing Bhishma and Drona, his worshipful grandfather and master. But Krishna said that he need not be afraid of killing his grandfather. When the sons of Dhritarashtra tried to disrobe Draupadi in the assembly of the Kurus, Bhishma and Drona were silent. And for such negligence of duty, they should be killed. Arjuna or Krishna showed his universal form to Arjuna just to show him that these people were already killed for their unlawful action. That scene was shown to Arjuna because devotees are always peaceful and they cannot perform such horrible actions. The purpose of the revelation of the universal form was shown. Now Arjuna wanted to see the forearm form, and Krishna showed him. The devotee, a devotee is not very much interested in the universal form, for it does not enable one to reciprocate loving feelings. Either a devotee wants to offer his respectful, worshipful feelings, or he wants to see the two-handed Krishna form so that he can reciprocate in loving service with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 50. Uh, Sanjayo vacha iti arjunam vasudevas tathokva 
Stakam Rupam Darshayam Asa Buyam Ashvasayam Asa Chabitaminam Bhutva Puna Sumya Vapur Mahatma Synonyms Sanjaya Uvacha Sanjaya said Iti thus Arjunam unto Arjuna Vasudeva Krishna Tata in that way Uktva speaking Svakam his own Rupam form Darshayam Asa showed Buya again Ashvasayam Asa encouraged Cha also Bitam fearful Inam him Utva becoming Puna again Somya Vapu the beautiful form Maha Atma the great one translation Sanjaya said to Dhritarashtra the supreme personality of Godhead Krishna having thus spoken thus having spoken thus to Arjuna displayed his real four-armed form and at last showed his two-armed form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. Report. When Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, he first of all appeared as four-armed Narayana. But when he was requested by his parents, he transformed himself into an ordinary child in appearance. Similarly, Krishna knew that Arjuna was not interested in seeing a four-handed form. But since Arjuna asked to see this four-handed form, Krishna also showed him this form again, and then showed himself in his two-handed form. The word Samyavapu is very significant. Samyavapu is a very beautiful form. It is known as the most beautiful form. When he was present, everyone was attracted simply by Krishna's form. And because Krishna is the director of the universe, he just banished the fear of Arjuna, his devotee, and showed him again his beautiful form of Krishna. In the Brahma Samhita 538, it is stated, Primanjana Churita Bhakti Vilo Chanena. Only a person whose eyes are smeared with the ointment of love can see the beautiful form of Sri Krishna. Arjuna Vacha, Dristvedam Manusam Rupam, Tava Samyam Janardana, Idanim Asmi Sambrita, Sacheta Prakritim Gata. Arjuna Vacha, Arjuna said, Drisva seeing idam this manusam human rupam form tavayor somyam very beautiful janardana o chastars of the enemies adinam adini idanim now ask me i am sambrita settled sacheta in my consciousness brikatim but to my own nature gata returned translation when arjuna thus saw krishna in his in original form he said O Janardana, seeing this human-like form so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind and am restored to my original nature. Report here, the words manasam rupam clearly indicate the Supreme Personality of God it to, originally, to be originally two-handed. Those who deride Krishna as if he were an ordinary person are shown here to be ignorant of his divine nature. If Krishna is like an ordinary human being, how is it then how is it possible for him to show the universal form and again to show the forearm for Narayan form? So it's clearly stated in the Bhagavad Gita that one who thinks that Krishna is an ordinary person and who misguides the reader by claiming that it is the impersonal Brahman within Krishna speaking is doing the greatest injustice. Krishna has actually shown his universal form and his forearm, forehanded Vishnu form. So how can he be an ordinary human being? Pure devotees not confused by misguided commentaries on Bhagavad Gita because he knows what is what. The original verses of Bhagavad Gita are as clear as the sun. They do not require lamplight from foolish commentators. Prabhupada was really upset when, <laughs> when somebody like Dr. Radhakrishna, you know, his Bhagavad Gita would say, it's not to Krishna we have to surrender, but the unborn impersonal within Krishna. He, he, he's thinking, you, you know, anyone who doesn't understand that Krishna is inside and outside is the same, is the biggest fool in understanding of Bhagavad Gita. And, and some people were upset. My, my guru, Kirtananda, he, he, he said, why are you always blasting the impersonalists? But Prabhupada came here to do that. He came to this Western world, which is filled with impersonalism and voidism and corrected the mentality and help people understand that Krishna is a person. He's not some impersonal energy or light or something, you know, whatever they imagine that him to be. Actually, they just want to be God themselves. That's why they imagine all these things. And they make up this whole stupid philosophy that Krishna is Maya 
and then we can rep you know we can actually become god ourselves that's the last snare of maya <laughs> go ahead you can read 52 it's 52 sri bhagavan uvacha su darshanam idam rupam darshana si yan mama devapi asya rupasya nijam darshana kanksina synonyms sri bhagavan uvacha the supreme personality of god had said su darshan very difficult to see, idam, this, rupam, form, thirstavam asi, as you have seen, yat, which, mama, of mine, deva, the demigods, api, also, asya, this, rupasya, form, nityam, eternally, darsana, kanksina, aspiring to see. Translation, the Supreme Personality of God had said, my dear Arjuna, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear. Purport. In the 48th verse of this chapter, Lord Krishna concluded, revealing his universal form and informed Arjuna that the form is not possible to be seen by so many pious activities, sacrifices, etc. Now, here the word Sudhirdashan is used, indicating that Krishna's two-handed form is still more confidential. One may, able to be, one may be able to see the universal form of Krishna by adding a little tinge of devotional service to various activities like penances, Vedic study, and philosophical speculation. It may be possible, but without a tinge of bhakti, one cannot see. That has already been explained. Still beyond the universal form of Krishna, beyond that universal form, the form of Krishna with two hands is still more difficult to see, even for demigods like Brahma and Lord Shiva. They desire to see him, and we have evidence in the Srimad Bhagavatam that when he was supposed to be in the womb of his mother, Devaki, all the demigods from heaven came to see the marvel of Krishna, and they offered nice prayers to the Lord, although he was not visible at that time to them. They waited to see him. A foolish person may deride him, thinking him an ordinary person, and may offer respect not to him, but to the impersonal something within him. But these are all nonsensical postures. Krishna, in his two-armed form, is actually desired to be seen by demigods like Brahma and Shiva. Okay, I guess I'll just read this one, and you can read the next verse. In Bhagavad Gita 9.11, that's the famous verse, is also confirmed, Abhijananti ma mudha, manasim tanamashritam. He's not visible to the foolish persons who deride him. Krishna's body, as confirmed by Brahma Samhita and confirmed by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, is completely spiritual and full of bliss and eternity. His body is never like a material body. But for some who make a study of, Bhagavad, of Krishna by reading Bhagavad Gita or similar Vedic scriptures, Krishna is a problem. For one, using a material process, Krishna is considered to be a great historical personality and very learned philosopher, but he is an ordinary man, even though he was more powerful, he had to accept a material body. Ultimately, they think that the absolute truth is impersonal. Therefore, they think that from his impersonal feature, he assumed a personal feature attached to material nature. This is a materialistic calculation of the Supreme Lord. Another calculation is speculative. Those who are in search of knowledge who also speculate on Krishna and consider him to be less important than the universal form of the Supreme. Some think that the universal form of Krishna, which was manifested to Arjuna, is more important than his personal form. According to them, the personal form of the Supreme is something imaginary. They believe in the ultimate issue, the absolute truth is not a person. But the transcendental process is described in Bhagavad Gita chapter 4, to hear about Krishna from authorities. That is the actual Vedic process, and those who are actually in the Vedic line hear about Krishna from authority. And by repeated hearing about him, Krishna becomes dear. As we have several times discussed, Krishna is covered by his yoga maya potency. He is not to be seen or revealed to anyone and everyone. Only by one to whom he reveals himself can he be seen. This is confirmed by the Vedic literature. For one who is a surrendered soul, the absolute truth can actually be understood. The transcendentalist, by continuous Krishna consciousness, by devotional service to Krishna, can have his spiritual eyes opened and can see Krishna by revelation. Such a revelation is not possible even for the demigods. Therefore, it is difficult even for the demigods to understand Krishna. And the advanced demigods are always in hope of seeing Krishna in his two-armed form. 
the conclusion is that although to see the universal form of Krishna is very, very difficult and not possible for anyone and everyone, it is still more difficult to understand his personal form as Sham Sundar. You can read 53. Sure. Uh, text 53. Naham Vedair na tapasa na danena na chejaya sakya evam vidho dashtum thirstavan asimam yata. Synonyms. Na never. Aham I. Vedai. I study of the Vedas, na never, tapasa, by serious penances, na never, danena, by charity, na never, cha also, ijaya, by worship, sakya, is, it is possible, evam vidha, like this, drashtam, to see, drishtavan, seeing, asi, you are, mam, ni, yata, as, translation. The form you are seeing with your transcendental eyes cannot be understood simply by studying the Vedas, nor by undergoing severe penances, nor by charity, nor by worship. It is not by these means that one can see me as I am. Purport. Krishna first appeared before his parents, Devaki and Vasudeva, in a four-handed form, and then he transformed himself into the two-handed form. This mystery is very difficult to understand for those who are atheists or who are devoid of devotional service. For scholars who have simply studied Vedic literature by way of grammatical knowledge or mere academic qualifications, Krishna is not possible to understand. Nor is to be understood by persons who officially go to the temple to offer worship. They make their visit, but they cannot understand Krishna as he is. Krishna can be understood only through the path of devotional service, as explained by Krishna himself in the next verse. <clears throat> Text 54. Bhaktiya Tvananyaya Sakya Eham Evam Vidorjana Vinatum Drastum Tachatatvena Pravestum Cha Parantapa Synonyms Bhaktiya by devotional service too, but Ananyaya without being mixed with fruitive activities or speculative knowledge. Shakya possible Aham I Evam Vida like this. Arjuna, O oh Arjuna, natum, to know, drastum, to see, cha and tatvena, in fact, pravestum, to enter into cha also, paramtapa, O oh subduer of the enemy. Translation, my dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am, standing before you, and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter, uh, enter into the mysteries of my understanding. Like, you know, it says, ananyaya, Without being mixed with fruit of activities and speculative knowledge, yeah. uh, Rupa Goswami also says says that in uh, the Nectar of Devotion, he says, uh, um, you know, neither by, you know, only by devotional service can I be understood as my I am, you know, free from speculative knowledge or fruit of activities. Purport. Krishna can be understood only by the process of undivided devotional service. He explicitly explains in this verse so that unauthorized commentators who try to understand Bhagavad Gita by the speculative process will know that they are simply wasting their time. No one can understand Krishna or how he came from parents in a forearm form and at once changed himself into a two handed form. These things are very difficult to understand by study of the Vedas or by philosophical speculation. Therefore, it is clearly stated here that no one can see him or enter into understanding of these matters. Those who, however, are very experienced students of Vedic literature can learn about him from the Vedic literature in so many ways. There are so many rules and regulations, and if one wants to understand Krishna, he must follow the regulative principles described in the authoritative literature. One could perform penance in accordance with these principles. For example, to undergo serious penances, one may observe fasting on Janmashtami, the day on which Krishna appeared, and on the two days of Akadasi, the 11th day after the new moon and the 11th day after the full moon. As far as charity is concerned, it's plain that charity should be given to the devotees of Krishna or engage in his devotional service to spread the Krishna philosophy or Krishna consciousness throughout the world. Krishna consciousness is a benediction to humanity. Lord Chaitanya was appreciated by Rupa Goswami as the most magnificent man of charity because love of Krishna, which is very difficult to achieve, was distributed freely by him. 
So if one gives some amount of money to persons involved in distributing Krishna consciousness, that charity given to spread Krishna consciousness is the greatest charity in the world. And if one worships and if one worships as prescribed in the temple, in the temples of India, there's always some statue, usually of Vishnu or Krishna. And that is a chance to progress by offering worship and respect to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For the beginners of devotional service to the Lord, temple worship is essential. And that is confirmed in the Vedic literature, Sveta Shatar Upanishad. You can go ahead and read the sure. Sanskrit and purport. Deva para bhaktir yatha deva tatha garau. Tasyaite kathitalye pratam prakashante mahatmana. One who has unflinching devotion for the Supreme Lord and is directed by the spiritual master in whom he has similar unflinching faith can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead by revelation. One cannot understand Krishna by mental speculation. For one who does not take personal training under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, it is impossible to even begin to understand Krishna. The word to is specifically used here to indicate that no other process can be used, can be recommended, or can be successful in understanding Krishna. I keep going. The well, uh, we'll just take turns reading. This is really a long paragraph, uh, purport. <laughs> <coughs> The personal forms of Krishna, the two-handed form and the four-handed, are described as sudur durdarsham, very difficult to see. They are completely different from the temporary universal form shown to Arjuna. The forearm form of Narayan and the two-handed forms form of Krishna are eternal and transcendental, whereas the universal form exhibited to Arjuna is temporary. The words tvad anyena. Nadrishta Purvam, verse 47, stated that before Arjuna, no one had seen that universal form. Also, they suggested that amongst the devotees, there is no necessity of showing it. That form was exhibited by Krishna at the request of Arjuna, so that in the future, when one represented himself as an incarnation of God, people can ask to see his universal form. The word na, used repeatedly in the previous verse, indicates that one should not be very much proud of such credentials as an academic education in Vedic literature. One must take to the devotional service of Krishna. Only then can one attempt to write commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. Krishna changes from the universal form to the four-handed form of Narayan and then to his own natural form of two hands. This indicates that the four-handed forms and other forms mentioned in Vedic literature are all emanations from the original two-handed Krishna. He is the origin of all emanations. Krishna is distinct even from these forms, what to speak of the impersonal conception. As far as the four-handed forms of Krishna are concerned, it is clearly stated that even the most identical four-handed form of Krishna, which is known as Mahavishnu, who is lying on the cosmic ocean and from whose breathing so many innumerable universes are passing out and entering, is also an expansion of the Supreme Lord. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 548, go ahead. Yasyaika Nishvasita Kalam Atha Valam Ya Jivanti Loma Vila Ja Jagad Andanata Vishnur Mahan Sa Iha Yasya Kale Vishesho Govindam Ari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. The Maha Vishnu, into whom all the innumerable universes enter and from whom they come forth again simply by his breathing process, is a plenary expansion of Krishna. Therefore, I worship Govinda, Krishna, the cause of all causes. Therefore, one should conclusively worship the personal form of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has eternal bliss and knowledge. He is the source of all forms of Vishnu. He is the source of all forms of incarnation. And he is the original Supreme Personality, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. In the Vedic literature, Gopala Tapani Upanishad 1 1, the following statement appears Sat Chidananda Rupaya Krishna Yakshlista Karine Namo Vedanta Vedyaya Gurve Bodhi Shakshine. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Krishna, who has a transcendental form of a bliss, eternity, and knowledge. I offer my respect to him, because understanding him means understanding the Vedas, and he is therefore the supreme spiritual master, end quote. Then it is said, Krishna vai paramam daivatam, 
Krishna is the supreme personality of God. It Gopal Tapani Upanishad one three. Eko Vasi Sarva Ga Krishna Idiya. That one Krishna is the supreme personality of God and he is worshipable. Eko Pisan Bahuda Yo Vibhati. Krishna is one, but he is manifest, manifested in unlimited forms and expanded incarnations. Gopal Tapani Upanishad 121. Go <clears throat> ahead. The Brahma Samhita 5.1 says, Isvara Parama Krishna Sachchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna, who has a body of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. He has no beginning, for he is the beginning of everything. He is the cause of all causes. Elsewhere it is said, Yatrayvatirnam Krishnakyam Param Brahma Narakriti. The supreme absolute truth is a person. His name is Krishna, and sometimes he descends on this earth, end quote. Similarly, in Srimad Bhagavatam, we find a description of all kinds of incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and in this list, the name of Krishna also appears. But then it is said that this Krishna is not an incarnation of God, but is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. Ete chamsa kalapum sam Krishnas tu Bhagavan Swayam. Similarly, in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Mata Paratram Nanyat, there is nothing superior to my form as the personality of Godhead Krishna. He also says elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, Aham Adir He Devanam, I am the origin of all the demigods. And after understanding Bhagavad Gita from Krishna, Arjuna also confirms this in the following words, Param Brahma Param Dharma Pavitram Param Bhavan. I now fully understand that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, and that you are the refuge of everything. Therefore, the universal form which Krishna showed to Arjuna is not the original form of God. The original is the Krishna form. The universal form with its thousands and thousands of heads and hands is manifest just to draw the attention of those who have no love for God. It is not God's original form. The universal form is not attractive for pure devotees who are in love with the Lord in different transcendental relationships. The Supreme Godhead exchanges transcendental love in his original form of Krishna. Therefore, to Arjuna, who was so intimately related with Krishna in friendship, this form of the universal manifestation was not pleasing. Rather, it was fearful. Arjuna, who was a constant companion of Krishna's, must have had transcendental eyes, he was not an ordinary man, therefore he was not captivated by the universal form. This form may seem wonderful to persons who are involved in elevating themselves by fruit of activities, but to persons who are engaged in devotional service, the two-handed form of Krishna is most dear. How many more verses we got here? I think this is the last one, but it's a long one, I think. Yeah, it, text 55. Let's, let's go ahead and finish it because it's only two of us here, and then we can start on the next chapter. Sure. Text 55. Mat karma krun mat paramo mad bhakta sangha varjita nir varir sarva bhuteshu yasamam eti pandava. Synonyms. Mat karma krit, engaged in doing my work. Mat parama, considering me the supreme. Mat bhakta, engaged in my devotional service. Sangha varjita, freed from the contamination of fruit of activities and mental speculation. Nirvarihi, Nirvaira, without an enemy, Sarva Bhuteshu, among all living entities, Ya, one who, Sa, he, Mam, unto me, Eti, comes, Pandava, O son of Pandu. Translation My dear Arjuna, he who engages in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of fruit of activities and mental speculation, he works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life, and who is friendly to every living entity, every living being. He certainly comes to me. I was thinking of that verse. I couldn't remember the Sanskrit, but I just remembered it from uh, Rupa Goswami's Nectar Devotion. It's uh, uh, Gana Karmana Avritam. Now I can't remember the first part of it. Anyway, purport. Anyone who wants to approach the supreme of all the personalities of Godhead on the Krishna local planet in the spiritual sky and be intimately connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, must take this formula as stated by the Supreme himself. Therefore, this verse is considered to be the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. 
The Bhagavad Gita is a book directed to the conditioned souls who are engaged in the material world for the pur with the purpose of lording it over nature and who do not know of the real spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita is meant to show how one can understand his spiritual existence and his eternal relationship with the Supreme per Spiritual Personality and to teach one how to go back home, back to God. In. Now here is the verse which clearly explains the process by which one can attain a success in his spiritual activity, devotional service. As far as works is concerned, one should transfer his energy entirely to Krishna conscious activities as stated in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, one, two, two, fifty-five. Anasaktasya vishayan etharham upayun jata nirbanda krishna sambande yuktam variryam uchate. No work should be done by any man except in relationship to Krishna. This is called Krishna karma. One may be engaged in various activities, but one should not be attached to the result of his work. The result should be done only for him. For example, one may be engaged in business, but to transform that activity into Krishna consciousness, one has to do business for Krishna. If Krishna is the proprietor of the business, then Krishna should enjoy the profit of the business. If a businessman is in possession of, a thousand, of thousands and thousands of dollars, and if he has to offer all of this to Krishna, he can do it. This is work for Krishna. Instead of constructing a big building for his sense gratification, he can construct a nice temple for Krishna, and he can install the deity of Krishna and arrange for the deity's service, as is outlined in the authorized books of devotional service. This is all Krishna karma. One should not be attached to the results of his work, but the results should be offered to Krishna, and one should accept as prashadam the remnants of offerings to Krishna. If one constructs there we go. A very big building for Krishna and installs the deity of Krishna. One is not prohibited from living there, but it is understood that the proprietor of the building is Krishna. That is called Krishna consciousness. If, however, one is not able to construct a temple for Krishna, one can engage himself in cleansing the temple of Krishna. That is also Krishna karma. One can cultivate a garden. Anyone who has land in India, at least, any poor man has a certain amount of land, can utilize that for Krishna by growing flowers to offer him. One can sow tulasi plants because the tulasi leaves are very important to Krishna. And Krishna has recommended this in Bhagavad Gita. Putram pushpam phalam toyam. Krishna desires that one offer him either a leaf or a flower or fruit or a little water. And by such an offering, he is satisfied. This leaf especially refers to the tulasi. So one can sow tulasi and pour water on the plant. Thus, even the poorest man can engage in the service of Krishna. These are some examples of how one can engage in working for Krishna. The word mat parama refers to one who considers the association of Krishna and his supreme abode to be the highest perfection of life. Such a person does not wish to be elevated to the higher planets, such as the moon or sun or heavenly planets, or even the highest planet in the universe, Brahmaloka, he has no attraction for that. He's only attracted to being transferred to the spiritual sky. And even in the spiritual sky, he's not satisfied with merging into the glowing Brahma Jyoti effulgence, for he wants to enter the highest spiritual planet, namely Krishna Loka, Goloka Vrindavan. He has full knowledge of that planet, therefore he's not interested in any other. As indicated by the word Mad Bhakta, he fully engages in devotional service, especially in the nine processes of devotional engagement, hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering prayers, carrying out the orders of the Lord, making friends with him, and surrendering everything to him. He can engage all in all nine pro devotional processes, or eight or seven, or at least one, and that will surely make one perfect. The term Sangha Varjita is very significant. One should disassociate himself from persons who are against Krishna. Not only are the atheistic persons against Krishna, but so also are those who are attracted to fruit of activities and mental speculation. Therefore, the pure form of devotional service is described in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.1.11 as follows. This is the verse I was talking about. Okay. Anyabhilashita shunyam jana karmari anavritam anukulayana krishna shilanam bhakti uttama. In this verse, Srila Rupa Goswami clearly states that if anyone wants to execute unalloyed devotional service, 
he must be freed from all kinds of material contamination. There we go. He must be freed from the association of persons who are addicted to fruit of activities and mental speculation. When freed from such unwanted association and from the contamination of material desires, one favorably cultivates knowledge of Krishna, that is called pure devotional service. Anukula yasya, shankalpa pratikulasya, varjanam hari bhakti vilasa, 11676. One should think of Krishna and act for Krishna favorably, not unfavorably. Kamsa was an enemy of Krishna's. From the very beginning of Krishna's birth, Kamsa planned in so many ways to kill him. And because he was always unsuccessful, he was always thinking of Krishna. Thus, while working, while eating, and while sleeping, he was always Krishna conscious in every respect. But that Krishna consciousness was not favorable. And therefore, in spite of his always thinking of Krishna 24 hours a day, he was considered a demon. And Krishna at last killed him. Of course, anyone who is killed by Krishna attains salvation immediately, but that is not the aim of the pure devotee. The pure devotee does not even want salvation. He does not want to be transferred even to the highest planet, Goloka Vrindavan. His only objective is to serve Krishna wherever he may be. A devotee of Krishna is friendly to everyone. Therefore, it is said here that he has no enemy. Nirvaira. How is this? A devotee situated in Krishna consciousness knows that only devotional service to Krishna can relieve a person from all the problems of life. He has personal experience of this, and therefore he wants to introduce the system, Krishna consciousness, into human society. There are many examples of history in history of devotees of the Lord who risked their lives for spreading of God consciousness. The favorite example is Lord Jesus Christ. He was crucified by the non-devotees, but he sacrificed his life for spreading God consciousness. Of course, it would be superficial to understand that he was killed. Similarly, in India, there are many examples, such as Haridas Thakur and Prahlad Maharaj. Why such risk? Because they wanted to spread Krishna consciousness, and it is difficult. Krishna conscious person that if it knows that if a man is suffering due to his forgetfulness of his relationship, eternal relationship with Krishna, Therefore, the highest benefit one can render to human society is relieving one's neighbor from all material problems. In such a way, a pure devotee is engaged in the service of the Lord. Now, we can imagine <clears throat> how merciful Krishna is to those engaged in his service, risking everything for him. Therefore, it is certain that such persons must reach the supreme planet after leaving the body. In summary... The universal form of Krishna, which is a temporary manifestation, and the form of time, which devours everything, and even the form of Vishnu forehanded, have all been exhibited by Krishna. Thus, Krishna is the origin of all these manifestations. It is not that Krishna is a manifestation of the original Vishvarupa or Vishnu. Krishna is the origin of all forms. There are hundreds and thousands of Vishnus, but for a devotee, no form of Krishna is important but the original form, two-handed Shamsandar. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that those who are attached to the Sham Sundara form of Krishna in love and devotion can see him always within the heart and cannot see anything else. One should understand, therefore, that the purport of this 11th chapter is that the form of Krishna is essential and supreme. Ascends the Bhaktivedanta purports to the 11th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of the universal form. Jai. Where are, what's the next chapter here? Devotional service. That's the next chapter. <clears throat> okay. I guess we're done here. Okay. We're 10 minutes over time, but that's the uh, that's the nice thing about having only two guys, two guys discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go on as long as you want. Okay. You know, the uh, the Krishna Kirtan Center has gone a little high tech now. They have this thing called steam. St st steam yard i think it's called and you can have like multiple can camera angles on your live broadcast huh. so you, you know, i have my camera my phone it's set up in like for for the audience and then you know for the kirtania you know um mukunda has his setup you know uh, for, for the per person who's singing so it's kind of nice you know you, it's nice to see that both features of both uh the audience and the and the uh, the leader, you know, call and response, you know, it's a little better. 
So yeah, you can check it out. It's on the Krishna Kirtan or Pittsburgh Kirtan Center um, okay. Facebook page. You know, you know that. Yeah. So anyway, thank you very much again, and have a wonderful weekend. And chant Hare Krishna and be happy and spread Krishna consciousness to everyone you meet. That's the main thing. <laughs> Haribo. Thank you. Oh.